The neo-Nazi movement in Australia has been dealt a substantial blow. Our infiltration last week of the country's largest far-right extremist organisation, the National Socialist Network, exposed a degree of evil that's difficult to comprehend. Disgusting racism and calls for violent unrest. Pleasingly, the work of the undercover operative in unmasking the neo-Nazis had immediate effect. Counter-terror police are conducting fresh investigations. Neo-Nazis have been sacked from large companies and some have issued public statements saying they now reject white supremacy. But despite that, it would be foolish to think they won't regroup. In fact, the planning is already underway, with help from neo-Nazi terror leaders overseas. And a warning, what you're about to see and hear is likely to cause offence. They arrogantly assumed anonymity was protection. But they were wrong. These neo-Nazis and the evil they stand for have been unmasked and their organisation, the National Socialist Network, has taken a significant hit. So when we fight for a free white Australia, we are joining our brothers in a struggle for a free white world. A global white revolution is the only solution. The rotten ship of white supremacy hasn't quite sunk yet, but plenty of its rats are deserting. It was disturbing, absolutely disturbing. It's, it's, it's gone too far. Senior members of the Coalition and Labor are calling for the NSN to be banned as a terror group. Police are investigating. And unmasked members have spent the past week in difficult conversations with family, friends and employers. Yeah, you know, I, I got no issue bossing around the fucking niggas. At the neo-Nazi head office, a place members smugly call Racism HQ, real estate agents have torn up the lease. The group is being evicted. It's another humiliating blow for the National Socialist Network. After being infiltrated by an operative, who was able to secretly film their activities. The undercover agent unearthed a trove of undeniable evidence that exposed a violent group that supports accused and convicted terrorists and trains young white men for a race war. But after months inside the group and after expecting him to exit, he surprised us by asking to extend his assignment. He detected a power struggle within the neo-Nazi leadership and wanted the chance to expose an emerging threat. Up until three months ago, Tom Sewell was the undisputed leader of the NSN. But on May 13, he was arrested by counter-terror police. The group's 2IC, Jacob Hassant, was supposed to take over the top job. But the undercover discovered another man secretly plotting to be leader. Jazz has asked me to come meet up with him. Um, invited me to his gym over in uh, Corowa, which is on the New South Wales border. Um, Jazz actually lived in the Victoria side, so can't wait to go and see what he's got to do and see, see who he's trying to know. He's from the, uh, I think he's from the Proud Boys. That's right. Yeah. He would be very, very dangerous. He's mainly into um, teaching how to fight. Um, I believe he can handle himself. Um, but he teaches how to kill, fight. You go in for the kill and that's it. Identifying this man, Jazz Sibi, inside the NSN was a surprise because he was better known as an Australian chapter leader of the Proud Boys, the US-based extremist group that made headlines earlier this year by joining other rioters storming the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. It's over! The chaos overseas seems to have been the perfect distraction for Jazz Sibi and Tom Saul to join forces to plan for an insurrection in Australia. When you don't vote with pens and ballots, but with your feet and with your fists, 
Look how much power you have. Tom Sewell believed the Proud Boys movement could help his own neo-Nazi empire grow. In early May this year, while the undercover was filming, he set out a plan to bring Jazz Siebe to Racism HQ to train his men. Yeah, he's got like a solid core of guys that he's like politicising. Um, and they actually follow them into the Proud Boys. But what Tom Sewell didn't anticipate was that two weeks later, he'd be arrested and remanded in prison. Ever the opportunist, Jazz Siebe, a convicted petty criminal turned gym owner, decided the time was right to turn the neo-Nazis' loss into his personal profit. He invited the undercover operative to his home on the Victorian border to discuss his plans. Well, if you can see what happened, just uh, if I'm gone, I'm going, I'm going to sign it out. I'm going to go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be there. No, I've been there. No, I've been there. No, in the backyard of his home, CB reveals he's now deserted the Proud Boys because they aren't extreme enough. Bizarrely, he claims he was only using them as a front to lure more men to Tom Sewell's neo-Nazi operation. The Proud Boys I had claimed to be a gateway to Tom. You know, I was going to funnel people in that direction. With Sewell in prison, CB sees himself as the future of the NSN. You know, if you start to ask Jewish questions or something. Dismissing 2IC Jacob Hassant as too young and too weak to be leader. That's my that's my that's my only concern with Jacob. He's definitely very smart, but he's a very soft kid. But he's a two. Yeah, I'm not gonna follow a twenty two, right? You know, I coached him, I watched him fight, they you know. All eyes are on me at the moment. They need to make the right decision. Oh, there's no doubt they're smart and tech savvy. There's no doubt they have an understanding of the laws of our land. ASIO boss Mike Burgess says the threat posed by these groups shouldn't be underestimated. But what's equally worrying for him is the influence of overseas neo-Nazis here. Internationally, of course, it's the online community that allows them to connect with other like-minded people, have access to hateful ideologies, and go into forums, very dark places, where they can encourage acts of violence or be encouraged for acts of violence by like-minded individuals. The word Nazis... While the power Nazis. battle within the NSN plays out, we set out to find the links between other Australian Nazis and overseas groups. We zero in on Australia's west coast to try and unmask the key recruiter for a dangerous group in the United States. I've been researching Matthew's dealings with a potential domestic terror group in the United States. In 2019, the FBI began to investigate an American neo-Nazi terror group called The Base, whose white supremacist members were planning for a race war. The investigation found cells across the United States and Europe but it also made an unexpected discovery. The base was looking for fresh Australian members too. They're trying to recruit and radicalise young men and guide them towards acts of violence. Jason Wilson is a US-based Australian investigative journalist. This is an organisation that's trying to build an international network of like-minded people who uh, are dedicated to the idea that all of these countries should be completely under the control and possession of, of, of white people. Last year, the base's security was badly compromised when dozens of recordings were leaked. Wilson supplied us with the audio interviews of four anonymous Australian men who tried to join the group. I was uh, pushed onto the base and pretty much just want to do everything that I can to, you know, save the race pretty much, leave a legacy for my children. We spent weeks listening to the tapes, trying to find clues that might help us identify these Australians. It's difficult listening, like this man, who idolises the actions of Christchurch terrorist Brenton Tarrant. I got more enjoyment watching um, St Tarrant do his thing. Um, but I've eaten several meals watching that. In the hours of audio, one man stood out. Going by the alias Volkskrieger, he was chosen by leaders of the base to be its key recruiter in Australia. His identity is one of the biggest secrets in Australia's extremist network. 
October 20th, 2019. We're going to be talking to Volkskrieger about, um, about starting up an Australia sale. Appreciate you accepting this role. Um, you know, you've been really solid for us, even though you're out there in Australia. Because it'd be a lot easier if I had another, another two people with me. Because then I'd be able to go into places like universities where, you know, the, the recruiting grounds are uh, more promising. Yeah, absolutely. It'd just be helpful if I can if I can just have a few people with me and I can start doing a lot more. Definitely, but, um, definitely. Volkskrieger is praised by the base for pushing propaganda to lure Australians to become soldiers in its white power race war. One man Volkskrieger targeted was a Perth neo-Nazi who used the alias James Jamison. Out of curiosity, what state are you based in? Like, you don't have to answer. No, I'm, I'm Perth as well. Uh, yeah, sweet, cool. Yeah, you're in Perth. Yes. James Jamison is clearly eager to impress the recruiter, revealing he's got access to guns. OK, so I'm a ethno-nationalist from Perth, Western Australia. Um, I'm a licensed firearm owner. I um, have a clean record with the police. Um, I have been part of uh, several white nationalist movements. We've confirmed the identity of the man using the online alias James Jamison. He's 38-year-old Perth man James Gregg. We've also confirmed he's very dangerous. In April last year, he purchased 24 ammonia nitrate coal packs and other materials that could be used to make a bomb. Confirming James Gregg as one of Volkskrieger's Australian-based recruits was one piece of the puzzle. But there was a bigger mystery to solve. Identifying the secretive Volkskrieger has taken many months, but multiple sources have confirmed his name and address. And for a man with such an imposing reputation, he maintains a very unassuming life, living with his parents in a working-class Perth suburb. His name is Matthew Golas, a 23-year-old tradesman from Balladura. After several attempts... Really serious information I have about Matthew. I'd like, like to share it with you. Pardon me? He and his family didn't return our requests for an interview. I've been researching Matthew's dealings with a potential domestic terror group in the United States. There are Australians who are connecting with material from the base offshore and that connection disturbs us because obviously it may well lead to people going down a path of radicalisation and that's our principal concern. The base's leaked audio has also caught the attention of ASIO, with Mike Burgess warning it isn't the only group luring young Australian men. You say people are connecting with the base's online material. How, how serious, how, how hateful, how violent is some of that material? Uh, some of it's pretty bad, um, but that's not the only group that produces um, hateful material. So there's unfortunately no shortage of material for those who are interested. In exposing Australia's neo-Nazi movement, it's become clear that international white supremacist groups see Australia as a key recruiting ground. What's even more dangerous is that men trained by the Australian Defence Force are signing up to this ideology. Last week, we revealed how former soldier Tom Sewell was seeking to build Australia's largest neo-Nazi army. But he's not the only Defence Force alumni trying to recruit. We all fucking know who you are, mate, OK? Fuck off and go and find your own cause to fight. Our investigation leads us to an Australian man whose online posts include a meme of convicted terrorist Brenton Tarrant, describing him as a saint and calling for direct action. And then he decides... Linking his voice to other leaked videos online, we find a face and eventually a name and a resume. How am I going to get there and who's coming with me? This self-styled neo-Nazi leader is ex-Australian army soldier Connor Sretenovich. Not just with our enemies, but within our own communities. Sretenovich served in the Australian Army for around 18 months. But by 2018, 
He had left defence to join another army in Melbourne, a militant neo-Nazi group called the Antipodean Resistance. I'm here to tell you right now, things will get worse and will continue to get a lot worse until they get better. It's a pivotal point internationally for us as a movement, us as fascists, us, us as people who want a universal truth of national socialism to be heard in the world. Sretanovich sought to inspire other Australians to become neo-Nazis, all the while remaining extremely security conscious. Every video he posted, he deleted soon after, unaware that one of our confidential sources had recorded them. I will be deleting them every 24 hours, though, mind you. Sretanovich's videos depict a man becoming increasingly radicalised. This video has sent a shiver across Ukraine. In late 2019, he became fixated with a neo-Nazi militia in Ukraine called the Azov Battalion. The system right now is in overdrive. To stop people like us from connecting, to stop people like us from meeting up online, in real life, full stop. Early last year, Sretanovich came here to Melbourne's International Airport with a ticket to fly to Europe. He didn't know it, but he was being closely monitored by authorities, who suspected he was planning on fighting alongside the Azov Battalion. Before he could board his plane, he was intercepted by Border Force officials, who told him he wouldn't be leaving the country. A few weeks later, without using any names, ASIO Chief Mike Burgess described the action in his annual National Security Threat Assessment. Earlier this year, ASIO advice led to an Australian being stopped from leaving the country to fight with an extreme right-wing group on a foreign battlefield. You probably already heard what happened. They cancelled my passport too. A seething Shretanovich took to encrypted neo-Nazi chat rooms to attack Burgess and ASIO for stopping his travel plans. These leaked chats reveal he was so incensed, he changed his online photo to that of the ASIO chief. I didn't get arrested or charged. They took my electronics though and items of interest, computers and camping gear mainly, like my knives. Shretanovich then went dark, deleting his accounts from chat rooms. I'm getting out of my group chats that I don't know 100% of the people in. But by then it was too late for him. We've confirmed that ASIO advised Foreign Minister Maurice Payne to cancel Conor Shretanovich's Australian passport. This earned him the dubious distinction of becoming the first neo-Nazi and the first former soldier to have his passport taken away. Before you take the step of advising the Foreign Minister to cancel uh, someone's passport, how significant is that process? It's a very significant process. So if we're looking at an individual and we're understanding the threat they pose and what they might be doing, which poses a threat, and we have a rigorous um, process where we do our security assessments on those, which could lead to an adverse security assessment from ASIO that's, uh, that asks the Foreign Minister to cancel a passport. You mentioned publicly that you stopped a right-wing extremist, a neo-Nazi, from travelling abroad without naming names. What was it that was of such concern? Well, it's obviously one, their ideology, the threat they posed that we assessed, and the activity they were going to go do in terms of going to a land where it was more permissive to do military-like action. Um, and our concern there is actually coming back to Australia battle-hardened with skills which, with that uh, ideology, is of grave concern to us. Australia's top spy, Mike Burgess, also admits there's a danger posed by neo-Nazis using our own defence force to learn key battle skills. Do you think some neo-Nazis are saying, I'll get my training in the Australian Army without obviously disclosing my neo-Nazi desires and then leave the army and, and spread what I've learned there to others? Is that a deliberate tactic? Oh, absolutely. What a, I mean, it, where's the only legitimate place, short of working in a police force, you can get that level of training? In fact, more, given a member of the Australian Defence Force, 
And as I said, people can be some extreme in their views. They can be racist, but actually uh, not really show it. Um, they can mask that, carry through, get well trained. And when they leave, they're improved. And that is of concern if they then move, use that to train others or go to acts of violence themselves. Do, do we need the ADF to be, uh, I guess, on guard so it's not training the next generation of neo-Nazis? Oh, I can assure you the ADF are very much on guard in this regards and actually we work closely with them. Obviously if we see an issue we'll let them know but they're very good at being aware of this and they look at that through their selection process. We help them there where we need to. Can some of these guys be saved? Oh, absolutely. It's never, you, you know, if anyone says it's too late, well, sometimes it is, but actually I'm an optimist here get to it early. It's not ASIO that needs to get to it early, it's actually um, parents, teachers, community groups, we all have an important role to play here. When we started this risky mission, we had little clue if we'd be able to identify the men behind this dangerous movement. But now their inner workings have been laid bare. Oh, no. No, no, no. What we've seen and heard is thanks to a brave man who hopes his difficult months undercover has helped reduce the threat for us all. When you entered the group, we knew it was a hateful group. We knew they had neo-Nazi ideologies. What surprised you? The surprise was how young they were. They were um, getting, getting trained up at an early age. What's your lasting impression of the, the members of the National Socialist Network? Up the top of it, the very dangerous. Is it a relief to be out of the group finally? It's, it's, I'm glad to be out of the group because um, now I could really think and just get out of my head. It was disturbing what you saw. It was disturbing, absolutely disturbing. I hope we prevent it, any serious things happening in Australia. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au as well as the 9now app.